Bobby Blake now joins us. Robbie, what's your honest opinion and assessment of the 1 0 loss to the league leaders? First half, I thought we were the better team. I thought we created enough chances. Um, probably three chances in the first half, and then, like we've done so much this season, we've committed a cardinal error and a silly mistake, and we've paid for it again. But, you know, we, we can go on and, and say the second half's a little bit of a. You know, but what you've got to say is our lads give 110. Percent that they are out there in the second half. We knew it was going to be difficult. We're playing the top of the top, top of the league. Um, you know, we're one nil up. Um, unfortunately for us, we we one nil down at half time, which we shouldn't have been. And then, um, you know, we've had the right chance right at the end when we're just praying for that chance. You know what? We just prayed and prayed, and I said to Jack, "We're well, ten minutes to go. We've got something. We're going to get a chance here." And let's hope we take it. And you know, Jimmy's probably prefers to admit he's got to do better. He's probably got to score. But I think you look overall. You know, we we had a lot against us again. We got lost the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper's come on. Who's never? He's only trained twice with us. So, it's a bit bit of um, daunting for him as well. And I think you could see he was a little bit nervous. Um, but we've got to deal with that. And um, I think we did second half. I thought we um, rolled our sleeves up. We dug in. And like I said, we we tried to get that one chance. And, and Jimmy gets the chance. But, you know, let's be fair, I think we should have been ahead at half time. What was your view on the red card? Because I don't think if you ask 100 people, they'll have 100 different views. Yeah. I haven't seen the video, Robbie. I've, I've had the 101st and I don't know either because um, Gaz was just saying to us there, I think he said his feet were outside the box, but his hands were inside the box. So I think going along the guidelines, you'd have to say that's probably the right decision, you know, but... Um, you know, Dan knows probably, you know, he's, he, listen, at the end of the day, players don't mean to do mix, make mistakes. They've got a split second to make these decisions. And I think if you ask Dan honestly, he obviously knows he's made the wrong decision. Does Should he just boot it up the field with one minute to go? Yeah, but, you know, he's made that decision and, and that's it and we've paid for it. And that's not saying that Dan Lincoln's to blame for us losing the game because we've had enough chances, I think, first half, certainly to be ahead at half time. It's just frustrating, Robbie, isn't it? How do you and, and Jack pick the boys up after that? Because there's no point being angry. It's just a case of no. frustration. No, you've got to pick... You, you know, you, we can only do it. We can only pick the boys up. But it's got to come from within themselves as well. Hopefully they're having a Christmas do tonight, so hopefully that'll get a little bit of team bonding going. Um, uh, and they need it. You know, they need to stick together. And I think second half, Lee, I think you've seen that, yes... They stuck together. You know, we made a few little changes. We tried to keep two up. Unluckily for Mason, didn't want to bring him off. But you know, we've got to make that decision. We thought we felt that Jimmy, with his pace down the middle, would be a little bit better than Mason down the middle instead of Mason being an out-and-out -out winger for us. And we had to change formation a little bit, and we chose to play the two up front because obviously I think Jimmy's more of a centre forward. And um, you know, we made that decision. And I've said to Mason, I'm really sorry about that. And, um, you know, but that's the way it is. You could hear a lot of, of boos and you could hear the noise around Nywood Lane when that change was made. Do you understand the fans' frustration about that change, Robbie? Um, I can understand the frustration from the fans, but I told you weeks, I told you every week, you, you've put in that situation, you know, once you stood over the other side line or you're in a technical area, you know, you've got to make these decisions. And, you know, I wouldn't want to turn around and say, well, to the fans, well, look, look who had the last chance to get us a win, to get us a point. Jimmy Muir. So people might say, well, it might have been the right decision to keep him on. All I'm saying is, you know, I'm a coach, I see football, they see football. You know, I think Mason's an out and out winger where we had to change formation, we had to put two, two, two down the middle just to nullify. So we had to play a four, three, two. So, you know, it was just, uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. And, um, you know, we had to make that decision. And uh, unluckily for Mason, he's. he's you know, we had to bring him up and apologise, and not much else I can do, you know. And it's just one of them things that it's always going to happen, you know. Take Mace, you know, leave Mason on, or because he, you know, he's been playing well, which he has, but sometimes, you know, in my career, when I was playing quite good, I, I was having to come off because I was one of the attacking players. It's just life. And, um, you know, we just wanted to get two down the middle and two affect the game in the middle half. And um, I thought, you know, I thought we'd done all right with it. And I think. Um, You've seen second half a spirited performance and we had a chance right at the end to, to get a point. Need to ask you um, a question. A couple of people yeah. have asked me to ask you this yep. one. It's about your comments from last week in, in the interview after the, the game last Saturday yeah. or, or Tuesday, I believe it was, sorry, about the comment 
if I'm still here. Can, yeah. can you just clarify that? Just clarify to, to me off the air. I'd like you to clarify. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a results business, Lee, isn't it? You know, and you know, at the moment the results are not going very well. So, um, I love the football club. I'm really enjoying it. Um, you know, it, you know, I still want to get, still want to get it right, and I believe I will get it right with Jack. You know, and um, um, there's there's a lot of good things at the football club that are happening on the pitch and off the pitch. Um, we need to add a few little things. We will do that, but I think. In, in, in terms, it's a little slow process for us. It's a little bit of a, a change for us. You know, we haven't got no many, not many experienced players. We've got a lot of young kids, and you know they will be better for these experiences. And um, you know, I, I firmly believe, you know, it, the, the, the club is in a good place. Listen, yes, are the results been a bit, bit disappointing over the last two months? Yeah, they've not been what we should have. But we've had quite a few injuries. We've had a little bit of unluckiness. I know people say you make your own luck. But I still think, you know, I'm not crying wolf here, you know. We have had a, a few unlucky little turns, and um, but we're open once we get everyone back fit. Um, you know, I think you've seen, you know, we've got nine, we've got ten men tonight. I think you've seen we're a match for any team, Lee. And, um, you know, and, and just ask, answering the, the last question about well, Mr. Lee, it's a results business, and, uh, you know, I certainly won't be walking away, that's for sure. So, um, you, know, you know, I love the football club, and, um, you know, I'm here for hopefully you know a long time, and um, you know I want to get it right. You know I want to be successful along with Jack. You know, and and we will get there. You've talked about injuries. Calvin Davis has come off injured. There was also a couple of knocks in there. Gary Charman seemed to pick one up as well. Yeah. It's never raining but pouring for the Rocks. What's the latest on on Calvin's injury? Calvin said to me in the bump that he's jarred his knee last week, and it's just it's sort of jarring a little bit, and then it gets a little bit sore. So whether that's happened with with Calv. Um, Gaz, we just thought, you know, he, he looked, he, it was, you know, quite a lot of work for him, and we thought that just bring him off as precaution, because obviously, for the last, you know, three or four days, he hasn't been feeling great. So testimony to him that he wanted to play today, which is great for us. But we just felt that, you know, we'd go three at the back and play a three-three-three. So, um, you know, we thought we'd just go for it, and you know, like you say, we nearly, nearly, you know, nearly got a, you know, got an equaliser. But I think. Even looking at the game, you know, there's times when we, we did actually get through them, through them pretty well. So um, I've got nothing but, you know, praise and, and respect for the lads, certainly on the second half performance because it was a tough ask for them. We've got two difficult away games coming up now, Kingstonian and Festem Worthing, both yeah. top teams. Yeah. You just need to take the spirit of that second half into those games, don't you? And, exactly. and try to continue in that way. 100 percent so you bang on. Yeah, we've got to take it in. We can't feel sorry for ourselves. And this is where you feel you get your characters from the dressing room or the people who you've got a little bit of belief in themselves and us as a team and as a group. And you've got to take it out from them. No team so far this season has outplayed us. You know, we haven't played well in certain games, but no team's outplayed us. And it's just, you know, making them, cutting them silly mistakes out that we're making. If it's not one, it's another one. But, you know, hopefully before Christmas, or hopefully the turn of the year, they will be in a lot better shape injuries wise and, and squad wise and then um, we can make a strong push to try and get higher up here. And after a couple of home defeats on the bounce, it's actually quite nice perhaps to be going away from home. Does that take a little bit of pressure off? Yeah, well I think I think with us in this league there's always pressure, isn't there? You know, even though we're struggling a little bit, we're quite a big scout for any team to come here and, and beat. So um I love I love playing at the lane and um I enjoy these and I'll enjoy it, you know, and it's just a shame for the punters that they not haven't got something to cheer about over the last couple of weeks. But, um, you know, mark my word, I'll be trying all I can and, um, you know, I won't stop certainly until we, we get in a much better place. And, you know, we, you, what you look at it, Steve, this is more or less the same team that was ripping teams up at the start of the season. They've lost a little bit of confidence. We've got a little bit naive at times. We've made too many mistakes and we've always been on the back foot with that. But, you know, we've got to dust ourselves down and, and, and keep going and we will do that. Thank you. Cheers, Robbie. Thank you. Cheers, uh, Jordan Evans and Lee Roberts here in, with Mark White, the Dorking <laughs> Wanderers manager. So, Mark, what was your thoughts on your team's performance today? Um, I thought, actually, we played really well, actually, first half, because it's a really strong win, and I thought they played really well. Um, um, the wind died down second half. I thought we, we kind of kept the ball. We created some good chances first half, and uh, I thought... It was difficult as well for, for, for Bogner because, because the wind was so strong. I thought um, Bogner were tempted to go a bit more direct than they normally would. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so, uh, yeah, overall kind of plea. Second half had many chances to put the game to bed, um, but didn't and, and made it a good game for the neutral. 
Yeah, and the big, the big talking point of today's game is the uh, incident with Dan Lincoln, the red card. What is your honest opinion on that? Yeah, honest opinion is, I mean, it, I, I don't like this situation because I don't like the, the fact it's a, the rule is it's got to be a red card. It's a really poor rule um, anyway. Um, I think it's got to be um, a, a, a bit clearer. But the fact of the matter is that the official have got to be 100 percent certain to do things like that that change games. And I don't see how they kind of could have been. And I'm not sure he consulted him either. He could, I think the linesman flagged for it. So not sure he went, went and consulted him. I think he just went and dealt with it and sent him off. Um, so if I was um, in, in Jack's shoes, I'd be really disappointed. No question about that. Looking at the league table, the results have gone for Dorking today. You're now three points clear, I believe, at the top of the league. That's got to be good for you guys heading into what is a difficult festive period for Dorking. Well, we haven't actually got that many games, believe it or not. Um, uh, but um, um, we've got FA Trophy next week. We're still in and, and, and Leatherhead, uh, local rivals, Merston. Um, but yeah, we, we've got a lot of boys that have been missing. A few boys, uh, uh, Matt Briggs and David Dre, some of our kind of senior boys that have been missing that are returning now. Um, so that just does give us something to build on and, and we're delighted with the result at such a big club um, because we are just minnows really in terms of where we've come from as a club and um, uh, so to come places like this and get results excellent you know. Yeah and obviously, <coughs> obviously as you say you're still in the trophy will you continue to play how you're playing so a possession game good solid build up in that trophy as well as outside of that into the league against obviously who you've got yes yeah that's what we do um we try to play a possession based game and um obviously not every team always lets you play that way um but um that's what we always try to do and um, we signed jason uh and uh, to try and I mean we've got a bit more of a plan b um but yeah there's, there's a you know long way to go in the season but just take one game at a time really a lot's been made of the finance that's been made available to Dorking, but <coughs> you're still going to play the games and get the points on the board, which you are doing. Well, the fact is this. Let me take you through it for your supporters as well, for Bognor supporters, yeah? Slav Huck, ex-reserve team keeper, been here three years, OK, yeah? Was playing Step 5 Sussex County League football. Um, at the back four, Isaac Philpot, same. Um, we've got probably six boys come from step five, five boys come from step four, the league below. But obviously, when you sign the likes of Jason, um, listen, I'll make no bones about it. Jason Pryor, obviously, is a more expensive striker than probably most or any. Um, and, but we, we, we've got a model and it works for us. We, we try to get promoted and we add in two or three players that are better than what we've got. But one thing you'll see about our squad, we've got players that have been with us five, six years. So it's, a, it's, a, um, it's something that's easily touted at us because we signed the likes of Jason etc but in reality 80% of the team have come from the lower leagues Do you think the the questions that are posed on a regular basis about talking being a money team then do you feel that that's a little bit of an unfair question not for me yeah, personally yeah, but no. everybody no, They're crazy they're crazy because um, if you look at the likes of Billy Ricky and, and fair play to Billy Ricky because but Billy Ricky last year wanted to win the league all they signed was National League players we've got boys here that are playing at you know, uh, no, no offence, Howsham three, four years ago. You know, so uh, our team's littered with players that have come through the league. So we're really, and actually that's something we're really proud about. So I'll always be extra defensive about that one. But obviously, we, we've, we've probably got above average budget in this league. And, and I just say it how it is. And, and we have got above av uh, average budget. So I'd expect us to finish above average in the, in the table. Yeah, so as you mentioned, you've got younger players coming through. You're like Bogner. Bogner rely on the younger players to help them boost up. Are you looking to maybe eye up some more experienced players just to try and help you through the latter of the season? Yeah, I mean, we, we, yeah, I think if, if we're in the mix, so to speak, then uh, obviously we'd look at um, we'd look at what's what. But we we we've got a lot of boys that have been here a long time that aren't necessarily young. What we'd love to find is the model that Bogner have got, Worthen have got, because that, that pathway um, takes a, a long time to create. And as a club, it's something we're working on in the new year, really, is trying to develop that pathway from youth upwards. Well, Mark, thank you so much for speaking to myself and Jordan. Best of luck for the rest of the season. No, thanks, we'll see you in guys. April. Good work. Thanks, guys. Thank you, mate.